It is November the 9th, 2015, and I'm going to evaluate these capacitors that I just took out of that old Mac amp. I've already done it, but I've, I've got to show you. This is a .22. Get this thing up. I'll make this quick. Turn up the... This is its readout. This will be... Um, it's capacitance 0.22. Let's see, it'll be back over here. Put this at 1. Got to get the sensitivity up. There you go. See how it dips right there, right in the middle? Keep the sensitivity increasing it slightly. We get an exact dip, as much as we can. And then this measures its dissipation factor. I had to set it for uh, low D. It is low dissipation factor. You want the dissipation factor to be very low. Uh, this patient factor is somewhere between zero, which would be the perfect capacitor, and one, which would be the worst capacitor. If it has a dissipation factor of one, then it's then the, all of the power is being dissipated in it, and you want to get rid of it. But anyway, and then you tune this until it dips again. Keep increasing our sensitivity. Okay, see where that's dipping right there? Okay, and then we're reading directly off right here. Whoa, our capacitance. See right there, it's measuring 0.22, just a hair over 0.22. This thing is accurate, and its dissipation factor, see it's called low D. You look here on the low D scale, it's about point, oh, 0 0.007. 0 0.007. That's really good. And the value of the capacitor is correct. I can do this for every one of them. These capacitors are 50, over 50 years old and they're absolutely immaculate. Here's the next one. Have to, have to kinda, they're they're going to be ever so slightly different, each one, but they're, they're all so very close together that dissipation factor, see it's almost exactly the same. These capacitors are as good today as they were made 50 years ago. These Sprague, um, I believe they call these Black Beauties. Here's another .22. These Bumblebees. I love this thing. This is a gorgeous instrument. Dissipation factor on it is going to be very low too. I, I don't want to make this thing too laborious. But see right there, the readout, that's just a hair less than 0.22. Uh, here's a 0.47. Put this guy on there. Hack it off a little bit. Run this fellow up right here until we get a dip right there. This is all being tested at 1 kilohertz. See, this will measure 0.4, 0.46. With a dissipation factor, uh, not not sensitivity, um, pretty much the same down here. 0 0.008. Now the way that uh, they didn't call it ESR back in those days, they called it uh, RS series resistance, and they say it's the dissipation factor divided by omega C S. C S is uh, the series capacitance, which is the capacitor value. I won't bore you with doing this with this math, but if you do D, which would be 0 .008 in this case, divided by 2 pi F, and then the value of the C, 2 pi times F, which is 1,000 hertz, times the value of the capacitor, you will end up with about 7, which, will get, which is exactly the same value that these little guys give you. This one right here gives you an actual dissipation factor. This one just gives you an ESR. This is a nice little meter, but this is this is the fancy version that's, you know, made back a long time ago. I love this instrument. Anyway, every one of these capacitors, including these uh, 047s, I got to show you one of them. They're they're absolutely perfect, absolutely. And you see how little, if any, difference it made. 047 would see dip right there, right there, keep the sensitivity up so we can get it as close as we can without making it neurotic, and then our 
dissipation factor there. See, it, they're, they're all down there into all less than 0 0.01. That was about 0 0.01. There you go. So, I don't change these things because I don't believe in it, although I did it tonight against my basic philosophy. And even though these capacitors are 50 plus years old, there's nothing wrong with them. And the amount that uh, it was improved tonight is so insignificant that uh, I, 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 shouldn't, I shouldn't have done it, but I did. And I'm certainly not going to go and, and put these guys back in there. But I just had to show you that. These guys are still good. Perfectly good. Good as the day they were made. I do want to show you how to, how to come up with the ESR value. A beautiful instrument like this, the way that you do it, again, right here, <clears throat> RS, which is uh, ESR, is the dissipation factor divided by 2 pi F and then the value of the capacitor. Okay, let's do it. And if for no other reason, this is going to show you, you can trust your ESR meter. So it'd be uh, like, oh, what is this, 0 0.008, thereabouts, 0 0.008, enter, 2 pi F, 2, enter, um, pi times F is frequency, 1 kilohertz right there, 1,000 times, C is uh, 0.22 microfarads, that'd be 0.22 E6 change line time, then divide. So it's about 5.79, call that 5.8, 6 ohms, whatever, as long as you can see that, it's about about 6 ohms of ESR. Okay, now using this little relatively inexpensive device here, what this thing is is really an AC ohm meter. So we had 5.79 ohms and uh, we Flip them together and then we press this button and we zero it out. And then we take that capacitor and we hook it across to there. And we get 6.6. .6. Now I realize that's not the same number. And if that was your bank account, the difference between 5.79 and 6.6 .6 would be different. $5.79 is not $6.60. But for all practical purposes, that's the same number. It's about 6 ohms of, e, of uh, ESR, equivalent series resistance. So these little guys are good. I trust them. And when I measure capacitors and they give me good ESR, I don't change them, except for tonight. So anyway, I had to do it. I guess I just had to prove to myself that, that uh, the little instruments we can have nowadays are, are, are really quite nice. This is, uh, you know, the expanded version of it from probably the late 40s or early 50s. Gorgeous instrument. There you go. Hope this helps. Save capacitors.